Young Canadians are taking new action today against climate change, both in the streets and in the courts. A very big crowd is expected to take part in a rally in Vancouver today, and activist Greta Thunberg will be speaking there. Also in Vancouver, a smaller group will be spearheading a new lawsuit that targets the federal government. John Northcott has more on this. This is a new trend, and Canadian youth part of the vanguard, John. Indeed. These are young people between the ages of 7 and 19 that are effectively suing the federal government in federal court. Now, uh, this as a result, and we we'll, can show you the, the picture of one of them. She, uh, a teenager, uh, her name is Sierra Robinson. She is the only one named so far in this lawsuit. However, when it's filed in federal court today, you're expected to hear uh, the names of some of the others as it's going to move through the court. Now, what they are going to do is they're going to sue the federal government using arguably the Charter of Rights and Freedoms of uh, Pierre Trudeau to sue the government of his son, Justin Trudeau, to go after it for this. Individualized injuries suffered as a result of climate change. Again, the focus is on young people. Violated the rights to life, liberty, and security of person also infringing on the right to equality. So effectively what they're saying in all of this is that as young people who can't vote, who are going to have to live in the world created by the rest of us and suffer the results of climate change, bad air quality, rising sea levels, even to the point where uh, their own security of person and even their cultures might be infringed upon by the ongoing effects of climate change. So that's what they're going to fight in court. They're getting some help in all of this. An organization called Our Children's Trust, an American organization. More on them in a moment, but let's listen to one of their spokespeople in Canada in anticipation of this court action. Have a listen. We want the government to work with the youth, not against them. You know, governments are created in part to protect children. And it's time governments change course from conduct that affirmatively harms children to protect the children. So the remedy in the case is clear. The youth are seeking a climate recovery plan. And for Canada to do its fair share to reduce emissions in line with what scientists say is needed to be done. So it's interesting, as I was mentioning in introducing you, John, climate litigation. This is sort of the new frontier, really, in the fight against climate change, not just children, but cities involved. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, along, arguably, in the tradition of going after big tobacco and most recently the makers of opioids. Uh, but we're seeing this has been underway in a smaller way for the last 10 years, but it's really picked up steam as the science and public opinion and as legal scholars have started to take a very uh, close look at this. Uh, we have a number of states in the United States, in California, New York, jurisdictions like Baltimore, uh, particular counties. And this is a map, again, I mentioned uh, the Our Children's Trust, and this is a map showing places in the world, over a dozen separate countries, all of which is focused on youth bringing their concerns to the courts. And you can see they're really right around the world, uh, their concerns being brought to courts and, uh, in some cases, increasing success uh, Netherlands, uh, for example, had a case where on behalf of 900 people, uh, they were able to get the government forced by the courts to have to lower emissions levels by 25 percent below 1990 levels. And so what we're seeing is increasing success around the world, and we'll see what happens here in Canada with a similar initiative. We'll talk about all of this with our guest this morning, Hannah Edenshaw, who's one of the plaintiffs, 16-year-old. She is a member of the Cheats Gitne from Masset on Haida Gwaii in British Columbia. She's in Vancouver, though, for all of the events today. And Hana, absolute pleasure to welcome you to our program this morning. Thanks for being my guest. Hi, good morning, Heather. Thank you so much for having me well, here. Well, I'm, I'm really so excited. interested in, in what you're doing today. I, let me ask, first of all, why it was important for you to put yourself forward in this way and be one of the lead plaintiffs in this lawsuit? Um, it was important for me to become a plaintiff in this lawsuit because... I didn't feel like I could do nothing with response to climate change, and I felt like I had an obligation and a duty to protect my land for my siblings and my family and generations to come. So, uh, it, for, for you're sort of the steward for the future, I guess, but but. This lawsuit is not even so much for the future. Well, I guess it is for the future, but it is also for you right now as a young person in that the center of the argument, as I was just saying it, is that the federal government is infringing on your charter rights with 
regard to its climate change strategy. Explain what you think the argument you're making and what you're taking to court means. Well, um, it's infringing on our charter rights because as young people, as youth, um, the government is affecting us more. And we have the right to life, liberty, and security of person. And if we don't have our environment, we won't have security. Um, is contributing to the climate crisis and supporting fossil fuels when it, like the government knows that this is not the way towards a sustainable future and a future for the young people. And as a person who can vote, we are more like affected by this, but we have no say, it feels like. So that is why we're suing them, so that we have the opportunity to have a voice. That's you just raised a really interesting point that I know the legal experts I've been reading have been saying because you can't vote you don't have a say in the democratic process so here through legal action you can express uh, your concerns but part of your suit um, Hannah says that there are specific individualized injuries that you have suffered as a result of climate change what are the specific injuries that you've suffered as a result of that um, well as a Haida citizen, I have like lost a lot of like security to culture and do cultural resources gathering. Um, one big example that's really affecting my life is um, the loss of salmon and um, the, the like the decimation of salmon creeks through climate change in part like these past few years the creeks have been too warm for the salmon to come up part of the time which has never happened. Um, and we're also like losing a lot of other, um, a lot of other species, like the amount of clams, for example, because we have oysters now. And I think it's always been too warm, too cold for oysters, but now they're coming, and like it's really affecting like our cultural medicines too, because as a rainforest, we've had um, a lot less rain recently, due in part to climate change, which has led to less medicinal plants, which can be used for um, cultural purposes. And it's really been affecting like my security and my like, um, ability to practice my culture. So that, that's through. really good. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, because I know nobody was talking about what the specific injuries for each of the plaintiffs have been. But now we get uh, the example in terms of the detail there for how this has affected you and your immediate surrounding and, and where you live in the country. What you're asking for in this case, in this suit, is not money. You're looking for action. What specifically are you demanding of the federal government? Um, when, if we win the case, we are demanding that the fe federal government um, develop and implement a science-based um, climate recovery plan based on like the newest um, available science to reduce Canada's greenhouse gas emissions um, and increase carbon sequestration consistent with what scientists say is needed for our climate system. So the scientific data to guide the, the decision making more than it is right now. I'm going to pull up a map. I don't know if you can see it from where you are, but our, our viewers will be able to see it. Um, one of the groups that is helping you is uh, the Our Children's Trust, and they've been involved in a number of uh, legal actions, or they have legal action ongoing around the world, similar to the one that you're now going to be involved in. We know, Ahana, that only in the Netherlands has a group been successful in using the courts to hold a government responsible for climate change action. So it's a new type of law, but it hasn't been overly successful yet. And I'm not a lawyer, but from what I understand, it's a lot more difficult to get the government to stop acting than it is uh, to force them to do something. Sorry, the other way around. It, it, to force them to do something is a lot more difficult than to stop them from doing something. So it sounds like you have a pretty tough case in front of you. Well, I mean, what do you think about the challenges ahead? Um, well, obviously, there's going to be a lot of challenge. This type of um, question about the specific challenges might be better suited for an attorney. But I believe that this case is a chance for Canada to change the status quo and to like be an example to other countries instead of just following in um, and just following in like going towards climate destruction. They could be one of the front runners in this, and Canada could be a country where other people look up to and 
look with two for examples when we're looking at climate action instead of just another place where we don't know if we have a future.